Open Your Star project, uh, basically we're using an Android phone to control car settings, uh, such as um, stop and start engine, turn the temperature, and fan levels. So, uh, there's our Android app interface. So you can see all the settings over there. Which this sends to the cellular shield, which have a, it has a SIM card in it with, of course, a number, so you can communicate via messages. So basically, this phone sends a text message to, to the cellular shield, which is attached to the microcontroller to parse out the message and perform the settings that it needs to. And so we can the OBD2 shield actually tests what the car's current setting is, such as if the car is on right now. So when we send a message over, we say, for example, turn the engine on. So the OBD2 shield will let us know that to not turn it on because it's on already. So that's right that way. And the main ring is basically the microcontroller, which is sends signals to our relay circuit board and perform the task. And if you want to take over on hardware. So we can try to describe how the system is. It's a device that you can use your Android phone to start and stop the vehicle, lock, lock, or set all the five controls. And basically, it sends from the phone to the back of the turn where it uh, interfaces with a relay driver circuit board. What that is, is a circuit board that um, overrides all of the car signals. So when it, has, it gets a message to turn on car or whatever it is, it'll go in and use a relay to cut the line that we just supply the, the default start and stop controls and direct them to our relay circle. And also, at that point, the Arduino can take over and start acting as if it is a control setting. So, you know, we override the default settings and then start with it. With that, we're able to do all kinds of things. Start and stop Set all the fan vent levels, the servo motors, uh, and the, um, the temperature level is a little different. We had to use a, a potentiometer, a digital potentiometer, because it we changed And so that's what we use our serial lighter down the floor. What was that? The serial? Yeah, the serial for a much more You are the serial for Yeah, to, to uh, we're really changing the different settings on the potential. So with that, we were able to move in and improve the temperature. Basically, that's our senior project for uh, our first uh, launch of batteries. The electrical engineer. The solar dome door panel project. Our goal in this project was to create a door display you could mount outside your door that would uh, display maybe your calendar or any other image you'd want to send to it or on a conference room, which show the schedule of that room. Here you can see our, uh, our panel. It's an e-ink time display, really low power. It actually uses uh, no power when it's not updating the screen. We've got a microcontroller board to manage the radio communications. And that's all powered from our own custom energy harvester. Uh, this solar panel pulls energy from the lights and uh, stores it in capacitors on our board. And the uh, energy harvester also tells our controller when to turn on and off and lets it know how much energy is available, if we can do an update or not. And uh, yeah, everything goes to sleep when we're not using it. So we use as little power as possible. And we charge for several hours and then we can do an update. So yeah, that's our project. So this is our smart home automation project. We decided to control a variety of interfaces in the home. Uh, we wanted to be able to control outlets. We also monitor the power consumption of those outlets remotely. Uh, we also wanted to control the heating and the cooling. And also detect if someone
everyone was in the house. So in this project we embarked coming up with, with these few simple interfaces. So we built it. We wanted to control all these things individually. So we have actually three different micro, well four different microcontrollers in this project, and they all interface with each other to the server. And so it's really um, the interfacing everything, interlinking everything is quite the challenge in this project. But it's been really helpful to learn all the different protocols. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, really simple uh, interface with these devices. Now it's looking at points. You turn on and it's back. You change it just to the fan only. You can also change the uh, sprinkler. Um, change the sprinkler. And that will just trigger on the sprinkler system for one station. Controls up to six different stations. Um, our goal is to have a 64 temperature sensors distributed through the house for accurate temperature measurements in each room. And also handle up to like 16 stepper motors where you can control dampers moving throughout the house. It also can detect the room occupancies. So we got a nice little sensor here. When you walk in, it will trigger this little laser tripwire down here. So you got the laser on a photoresistor, just drop in front of it. The light comes on. You also have a motion detector in here. And so you can detect when people are on and stuff over here. The light by stepping in front of it. So yeah. But all these things, this will detect whether you leave and whatnot. It works really well. Um, we have a nice user interface for the server. It's able to go on mobile devices as well as on tablets. And they have their own unique interface specific to the, that device. Um, oh, yeah, we also have a water pump sprinkler system down here. It's really nice if you want to water, it gar like water your garden. You have a moisture sensor that detects how much moisture is going in the ground. And if it's if you know if the ground is wet, it won't water the sprinkling stuff. Also, if it's daytime, it won't water, so you can serve water. So if you cover it, and it's nighttime. Oh, I got screwed. Nah. Yeah. So, that is our project. We are Operation STORK. STORK stands for Short Term Observational Radio Communication. The objective here is to take a software defined radio and stick it in the payload of the weather balloon and launch it to 100,000 plus feet. We uh, are going to send data to the ground that is weather, weather data, which is wind speed, the position of the balloon, temperature. Typically, In addition to that, we want it to function as a repeater station for radio communication. So if you tune to a uh, two meter frequency and transmit from it to the balloon, it will retransmit that data out of a 70 centimeter frequency um, to get a higher range. Typically, at that altitude, you can go from um, a two watt transmission to cover up to 800. Miles. So you get a greater range on RF communication by repeating a signal at that altitude. The future for this project is to hopefully use it as a satellite space, and by sending it to that elevation, as close to space as the weather balloon will take us, we can get how the radio is going to perform under those conditions, and then we can tweak the radio to make it more better in preparation. Prediction software that was also created. So, given wind uh, data provided by the National Weather Service, we can make a prediction based on where our launch coordinates are, where this thing will eventually land, so that we can recover the equipment that we put in this um, The biggest um, issue with this project was the RF design. There's a lot of impedance matching and attenuation issues. 
we face currently. We hope to have those results at some point in the future. Uh, we also met in a way to protect the balloon from drifting further than we would want to go to recover it. We have a uh, what we call the playpen. So if the balloon goes outside of this playpen or uh, geo geodetic uh, box, the uh, uh, cut down mechanism would separate our payload from the balloon and it would come back down within a hundred mile radius of where we uh, initially launched this thing. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, Operation Star. Uh, what? It crunched down a little, but it's lower than you. Is it going up or down right now? I can't really tell. Can you count it? Oh, you have to.